So Tesla's been talking about how they want their cars to be able to be robo taxis when you're not using them. And the first step to that is them actually being able to drive you to work or on your daily commute. And I think this full self-driving beta that has been out for, I think over a year at this point, is probably as close as they've gotten so far. So I'm just trying it out on my regular drive to work to see if it is reasonable and how many disengagements I'd actually need to do and how many times I need to intervene. And we're coming up to the first stop sign. It is a four way stop. So it breaks pretty aggressively. I do have two cameras set up, one at myself and one in the back pointing towards the screen. It did that turn pretty well. And I'm gonna try and cut as little as I can out of this unless there's extra or it's stuck at a red light for a while. But yeah, so far doing good. It's just going the speed limit. I'll go a little bit faster because I know traffic tends to move a little quicker on this street. But yeah, so I've used this kind of on and off for a while, just mostly on big road trips where I just keep it for on the lane and occasionally switching lanes, but I haven't done a full drive. Usually I end up taking over at some point because things come up like construction, just people are in the street, you know, things that I would rather be in, in, in control of the car for. So right now I have to put a force on the steering wheel so that way it knows I'm still paying attention and I can actually make this thing bigger so it fills up the screen. Um, the main reason I don't use this for full drives is purely because it's embarrassing. Uh, like right now it's going 30 and the person behind me is wondering why I'm going slow. So we're coming up to a light, it's gonna go straight through it. I think I'll speed it up to 45. Yep, that person just passed me. So it's trying to follow the speed of traffic a little bit better. Um, it's changing lanes, there's no one there. Did that fine. I find that this this is like kind of hit or miss on the street specifically. Uh, coming up, there's gonna be some like construction. So I've like I've seen human drivers get confused by the way the lane lines are just kind of shifting around in a weird way. So we'll see how this car reacts to it. And you can see on the screen, it does have a really good visual of what's going on in the surroundings. I just saw that speed limit sign. It sees the cars on the other side of the road. Um, it sees that semi truck that's actually parked on the street on the other side, applying some force. And it has that I, I do have my foot over the brake this entire time, just in case I need to. Um, in the in the past when I've used this, the, I've only had to disengage for two reasons. One was the construction, which it was fine. The cones were up. It was going. To, it felt like it was going to move, but like I just didn't want it to move too late, you know. Um, and the second was it was taking too long to do a turn or to do something, and I just wanted to go without the person behind him wondering what I'm doing. But yeah, we're getting up to that area with the construction at a light. You can see it does highlight points or items of interest in blue. So you know what it's looking at, like the lights here are highlighted. All right. So it's doing pretty well. This is kind of a, a busy commute time in this area. So it's gonna have to deal with some traffic getting on the freeway. It's doing pretty good through this, this construction. You can see it actually picks up all the cones and the cars parked for the, the, the people on the street. And now we're getting up to the actual on-ramp, which isn't the worst. Um, it's picking up the cones, it sees the car in front of it. It's staying in the lane. Uh, it does this cool thing where it shows chevrons going towards you. If the car in front of you is going slower than you or the car will be slowing down in the upcoming, you know, distance that it's traveling. You see it a lot, like when you're coming up to a red light or when you're merging out of traffic like this and the car is coming in from the, the, the freeway entrance. Um, it looks clear. This lane is ending so the car can just merge over. It didn't use the turn signal, which I found interesting. Oh, it's stopping. This traffic is pretty stop and go from what I see. Um, it is 
more free flowing on the left side where people are going faster. These are usually the exits that get caught up, but, oh, it's actually trying to move over that way. You can see that car is a part object of interest that so was blue. Um, but it actually, if you come into the settings for autopilot, it has three profiles, chill, average, and assertive. I usually set it to average, so it's not going for a ton of lane changes and it doesn't just stay in like a passing lane, uh, mostly because I don't want to bother anyone <laughs> by having the car move around too much. I just want it to go from point A to point B. So it's going back to trying to switch lanes. It did that successfully, applying some force. Uh, the exit is about two and a half miles away. We're going uh, pretty solid. Oh, it's trying to get over to the faster moving lanes. It's turning, got the cars coming behind me. All right. I'm gonna speed it up to 70 because everyone here is going a little quicker. Yeah, so I find in general, like it does a pretty good job, like especially like all the updates they've done, like for the most part, it stays in the lane really well, which is something that I think Tesla was good at before. Uh, it's doing better now of like staying offset in the lane as opposed to just dead center, which is like how people drive, right? Like no one drives dead center of the lane, they're usually a little bit to the left or the right. So it's good that it's now like trying to emulate that like human driving. Yes, yeah, holding at 50, staying in the lane, not too bad. This isn't a super complex drive either. I just have to come down a couple of streets, get on the freeway and go down like two exits. And then there's some weird like stuff that'll happen with traffic possibly closer after the exit. But for the most part, just like a, like a handful of lights and a couple lane changes if it wants to. It's not a complex drive, but it is nice to see like if this computer can do a daily commute before it's off and doing like robo taxiing. So it's moving back to the right to make sure we're able to get to the exit. So this is where I don't really use a GPS on the car super often for like, at least like this drive, like I'd usually take this exit, but it thinks the next exit is more efficient. I'm not sure why. Um, I think there are less lights on this exit that it's passing now, but whatever it thinks is faster. So this is a con little bit of an interesting spot where when you merge to the right, people are also trying to merge into the freeway. So like you have kind of have to, the car will have to deal with trying to get over for the exit while also people getting in from a, an on-ramp that's happening right before the exit. Okay, but it's It'll be interesting to see how close it gets to the exit before it tries to merge right. Because after the it has to turn right. So I don't think you'd want to be in the left lane that gets off. Oh, there we go. It's trying to merge. Oh, and it just slammed on the brakes. Um, I wouldn't have done that, but it, it worked out. The person behind me is also in a Tesla. I wonder if they're on full self-driving. Um, it's always interesting to see like, and wonder what other cars on the street are doing the same thing you are. But yeah, we're in the exit now for the lane. We're about to get off. It's honestly, I haven't had to intervene at all yet. So maybe it is good at just a short, simple drive. But what I'm interested in is where the car thinks the drive ends, right? Like in the navigation, it like just kind of points you to a spot at that address, but I have a parking lot at work. So I would want to park in that lot. It'll be interesting if the car goes into the parking lot or if it just stops in front of the building at which point the GPS coordinates are for that address. So we're at the light. Um, it's a no turn on red, so the car will not try. That truck did, but that's fine. Um, right now it's highlighting the lights. It's telling me that it's stopping for traffic light. I did like that update they made recently. They started putting out more text to so you're aware of what their car is doing when it's doing the things that it's doing. Um, and you have more like, context as to what's going on and like behind the like quote unquote thinking of the computer. The light turned green so the car is able to just go. You'd apply some turning force. 
personally, I really like driving. I don't think I would do this on a regular basis. It is kind of nice, like if you're, you're, you're someone who drives a lot, you can use this on a longer drive. But like my commute is maybe 15 minutes on like, <laughs> an, like, an, like one of those days where it's extra traffic. So it's not too bad and I kind of enjoy it. So we're at a light right now, we're behind a truck, but I can see if, in this visualization, you can actually see the cars coming across in the intersection. You can see the light, which is pretty far behind that truck is still highlighted blue as an object of interest. We see all the trucks and buses coming up on the left side, visualized on the map. It's actually pretty impressive how much they can see using just the cameras. Since Tesla did switch to vision base as opposed to having any LiDAR or radar in it. Um, I don't know, I find initially it was hit or miss where the vision, I feel like it had trouble with depth where it would stop way too like late and just kind of slam the brakes at the end right before it like needed to stop. But now it's doing a lot better like easing into stops and just driving more normally, I guess you could say. This is a kind of a long light, unfortunately. But it is seeing, it's still seeing cars in the intersection going the other way that are turning, which is pretty impressive. All right, and it's green. We're getting to go now. Put some force on the wheel. It's not. Okay, it's trying to turn lanes, but there's a car coming up. Waited for that to go, and now it is merged over. I think it's just trying to get around this truck. Uh, uh, yeah. Interesting. I haven't seen it try to pass a truck on a free, or like pass another car on just a local road before. It's usually just on the freeways. So, I mean, it did pass it by a good margin. That truck is going pretty slow. Um, the speed limit on the street is 50, but with traffic going about 35. So pretty, pretty reasonable speeds for a uh, street with a possible red light coming up. But it does have enough time, I think, to make it through this light. It made it. All right. The next turn is the one that's kind of iffy because you turn into another light and there's a, a sign for road work on like right at the apex of the turn. So it's, uh, let's see. Okay, it come, it's coming into the turn a lot faster than I would. It's pretty close to that thing. And then, well, I mean, it made the turn and it stopped at the next light. So it made the turn a lot faster than I personally would have but it got through to the next light. Now we're green, we're going forward. This lane actually ends up ahead. So it should be ready to merge left. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit just because I know this is a, a kind of a fast street. It's merging into the lane. See, it's not, it's like one more turn. Um, sometimes I find it does have issues with these double yellow like turn lanes because it doesn't know if it can turn into that lane, but it. So this is one of the times confident it can be in that lane for that left turn. See, so we're going left, applying some force of, as a disengagement. Just finish up the drive. So I ended up having to apply force at the turn, which ended up just being a disengagement. Um, it does, Interestingly enough, it's taking the autopilot right up to the front door of the building, which is not the parking lot. So I'll have to go turn around and park. All right, so I ended up having to go back and park myself because um, the car just stopped in front of the building. Overall, that was a pretty good drive. It ended up being able to just bring me all the way to work. The only intervention I had was trying to apply the force to the steering wheel while it was turning, ended up disengaging the autopilot, but I think it could have done the full drive, zero disengagements, which is really impressive. Now, I wouldn't say that's enough to, I can see the future of robo taxis, but I do think that it's getting pretty good and good enough to, I think for like short trips around town, maybe small parts of your daily commute, if you have a short one like I do. But overall, it was a pretty good experience and I'm excited to see where they go with this in the future and how they improve along with other car companies like bringing up this kind of technology on their own. But thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos about tech cameras and making. Here's a video about an AR monocle and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.